Hi, welcome back to my Sunday scripture section. Um, I can't believe it's uh, that time again, but you know, I feel like no sooner do I do one of these videos, then it's time to do the next one. Um, so yeah, if you're anything like me, your, um, your weeks will be flying by. Um, and it's kind of hard to, to keep track of them, to pin them down. Um, I think because, um, you know, life is, life is different now to how it was before and we're working from home a lot more. We're probably not seeing as many people as we did previously, depending on where you are on the planet right now. Obviously it will be different for you. Some places are more open than others. Um, but where I am, it's, it's kind of like quite closed down. Um, and so even though we are allowed to interact and to socialize, it's kind of encouraged not to, um, because we're kind of like undergoing another, um, spike supposedly. So, um, yeah, so, um, I'm kind of finding that, um, life has taken on a different rhythm and a different pace. Um, and whereas before all of this happened, I used to be out and about a lot more. I would be out every single day, um, you know, doing things as part of my routine. I would be working away from home. I would be visiting friends. I would be going to like the gym. Um, I would be taking walks in different scenic areas and that kind of like, and, and going to different local shops. Um, and that kind of like thing has, has shifted greatly um, into a new rhythm which I have adapted to and which uh, to an extent I really enjoy. Um, you know, I'm an introvert at heart um, and so I like my own time, I enjoy my own time, I find peace and rejuvenation in just being on my own and doing something mindful or meditative. Um, that I enjoy um, and I find crowds um, and people to be quite tiring so I can only take that in small doses and I have to be um, I have to be mindful about the situations that I put myself in um, otherwise I will you know run out of energy so this time for me has been um, really lovely in the sense that um, I guess everybody else in the world has adopted more of an introverted way of life um, and so my preferred pattern and routine is now more of a normal routine and pattern for everybody else and I feel there's a greater understanding um, of sensitive people now and introverted people and also people with like um, you know illnesses and autoimmune conditions people with compromised immune systems who can't go out so much who who weren't able to go out so much before all of this happened for the introverts who, who weren't able to go out so much before all of this happened it's like now everybody has kind of experienced their way of life and hopefully has more of an understanding and more compassion and empathy towards them um, and maybe the extroverts have become a bit more introverted in a positive way um, and maybe the introverts have been um, pushed into being more extroverted in a positive way it's like because I haven't been able to go out and connect with the world because I haven't been able to to have you know clients in my house um, for readings I have um, you know I have kind of like taken that leap into making videos and putting them out on the internet um, and doing Skype sessions with clients and Zooms and, and, and stuff like that. And that's something that I never did before and I shied away from it last I thought oh, I couldn't do that. I'd be far too scared, I'd be far too self-conscious and I thought I'd hate it. Um, and you know, the whole, whole situation since March, that kind of like pushed me to overcome that hurdle because it was the only, it was the only option I had to keep going, to keep working, to keep communicating with people in the way that I wanted to, to keep sharing my message. Um, and it's been great and I've really, really enjoyed it and I love it. I love, I love making these videos, I love showing up and talking to you. Um, and I hope that you, that you enjoy watching them as much as I enjoy making them. Um, and I also hope that your weeks have taken on a new routine, which is a routine that you have um, come to love. Um, I hope that you've taken care to nurture that routine so that that routine is, is something beautiful, something really supportive and loving, something that is as close to, you know, 
a holiday or a retreat as is possible in your life because obviously if you have lots of children or even one child um, then that kind of like changes the dynamics slightly especially if you're homeschooling and if you're if you have young children you know trying to keep them entertained is is a full-time job so maybe not so much in that case um, and also you know if you're working from home but you're still you're still tied to office hours um, then then maybe also it hasn't been that much of a kind of like a, a release and a break for you it's probably been harder in the sense that you don't have the the interaction with the other people in the office and you're not going out and about to meetings and and and, and things so you know maybe you like that but maybe you don't um, but maybe hopefully there is time in your day and as a parent there is time in your day to put in some self-care routines things that you didn't have time for before because you were you know taking your children to to hobbies to groups to extracurricular activities or um, because um, you were you know um, going to different places yourself to to run errands and to meet people and etc etc um, and you know you don't have the the, the daily commute or um, the school run necessarily depending on where you are in the world right now whether your children have actually gone back physically to school or not and also whether you've chosen to send your children back to school or whether you've opted to keep homeschooling them for the time being or for you know forever um, so if it's possible for you to you know incorporate a little bit of self-love and a little bit of self-care into your day something that's just for you then that's a brilliant thing to do and i really hope you have managed to do that and if not then maybe i've planted a seed for you to do something even if it's literally just you know taking a nice relaxing um, unwinding detoxing bath um, a couple of times a week and putting epsom salts and bicarbonate of soda or baking powder um, depending on where you live in the world um, and you know some some essential oils or half a squeezed lemon and some herbs even um, you know just like kind of going online and figuring out okay what what sounds like a nice detox bath to me do you want to put some mud or clay in it um, do you want to put some dried lavender in it there's lots of different things that you can add to a bath to make it relaxing and and or detoxing um, um, you know to help you release stress and pressure and to get rid of a migraine so kind of go on the internet um, and have a look and see what appeals to you um, and there are you know many great ideas out there there's a, um, a website called naturallivingfamily.com which is run by um, a, a couple um, and they, um, they they share education on essential oils and they have a podcast and they're both really lovely I think um, but they have like loads of free recipes on their website for um, for everything for all like you know clean household products for healthy eating for skincare but all of it's like clean no chemicals and you make it yourself at home um, and they've got some good bath ideas as well so you could go there and, and maybe also you could get some inspiration about self-love things that you could do for yourself like for example making a juice um, every day and you know drinking that as an act of self-care so I will leave that to you um, and put that topic aside but um, yeah I, th I think that life is different at the moment but hopefully there's more room for ourselves within that different um, so even though there's not maybe as much interaction with other people um, face to face in the way that we were used to and in the way that we have come to to know and love and, and you know in the way that has been normal for for our species since the beginning of our species um, I, th I think there's been a, a really good learning uh, that's taken place over the course of this year and I think a lot of us have done a deep dive into ourselves and onto our psyche I think we faced our worst fears and we've started to, or we have, um, overcome them. Um, you know, there's nothing like being shut up in your um, place of residence all day, every day, not allowed to go out to force you to really, really look in the mirror and confront all of the stuff that you've been running away from your entire life. And there's suddenly there's no escaping it because there's nowhere to go for a distraction. Um, so I hope that you've been able to, to move through that and come out the other side of it or come out 
far enough that it's no longer quite so terrifying and um, all consuming so that it doesn't drop you to your knees anymore. Um, so that said, I will pull some cards for our reading for this week and um, see how we get on. So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to go back to my good old favourite, the Radiant Rider Waite Tarot. Um, I shall shuffle it and we shall see what comes up. Okay, so I'm shuffling the cards. And then I'm going to connect to the deck. so that we are moving in a circle. Okay. I also put my intention into them then, just in case you're worrying that I'd fallen asleep on you or something. <laughs> out really quickly today that's a good sign so the first card that we have for Monday Tuesday and Wednesday is the world and we've had this card before but from a different deck and every time I read a card from a different deck um, it has a slightly different meaning for me um, and every day when I read a card it also might have a slightly different meaning for me because I read it intuitively and I follow what leaps out of the card for me on any given day. So I don't read it in a textbook way, I read it in a felt sense because that's how I connect with the world, that's how I read it, um, and that's how I move through it. I'm very tactile and everything is very visual and everything has a story and that story changes like my story about who I am as a person will be slightly different from day to day depending on my mood how I'm feeling if I'm really upset my story might be a bit more gloomy if I'm really positive and really happy then my story might be a bit more positive um, so you know things things shift and that's the same with the cards the story that is inside the card shifts as well um, in, in relation to what is going on and what I am feeling in the collective energy. Um, so this card for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, the world, um, is a really positive card. It's kind of telling us that, you know, this is a, a new week, a new start, a new story and we are a centre of it. We are at the centre of the start of the story and it's almost like we're standing there and we're looking in a mirror like this woman is, she's, she's very healthy, she's very strong, she's very courageous, powerful, confident, um, you know, she, she looks great and she looks really peaceful and happy and she kind of looks like like a goddess, yeah, she is a woman who is, she's like soft and gentle um, and of the earth, like of one with mother nature, but at the same time, she is, she is strong, she is purposeful, she knows what she wants and she believes in her ability to achieve it. Um, you know, she's, she is connected to her third eye and her voice is flowing she has no trouble speaking her truth this is the woman in the mirror yeah so this card is kind of saying to you basically monday tuesday and wednesday 
stand naked in front of the mirror, whether that's physically naked or whether that's just naked to yourself so that you're looking at yourself and you're looking through the mask that you show to the world and through the mask that you, you put on and present to yourself as well. Because, you know, when we look in the mirror, we don't often really look, we don't really see the true us. It's like, how many times have you discovered like a mole or um, a beauty spot or a freckle or something somewhere on your body and you're like, was that always there or is that new? Or, you know, or like a bruise somewhere and you think, how on earth did I get that bruise? It's huge. Like, when did it happen? It's because we're not really paying attention and we're not looking closely. We just go about our day. And we're not necessarily present to, to everything that's going on because we're multitasking. Um, and this card is saying, no, come back, stand still. Strip off and stand in front of that mirror. That place that gives you the biggest challenge, that place that you try at all costs to avoid, is you naked in the mirror, your bare self, your who you actually are when you strip everything away, when you're wearing no makeup, when you haven't brushed or washed your hair, when, you know, you, you, you've done nothing to improve your appearance or anything, you're just standing there as is, as you rolled out of bed and you stand there and you look at that woman or that man or you sit and you gaze and you speak to him or her and what comes up what are you seeing what are the things that you feel like you want to fight and avoid if you look at that person and you you reach out to them and you say hey I love you exactly as you are. I love you with all of your mess. I love you with all of your failures. I love you for all of the things that you want to do, all of the things that you dream of doing and haven't managed to do yet. I love you and I respect you and I support you and I'm excited about your dreams. I'm excited about the things that excite you I want to be there on your journey. Please let me be there on your journey. Tell me, how can I help you? How can I help you become the you that you want to be? Like, how can you help yourself be more like this woman in the card? And then I want you to imagine the woman in the card in the mirror, but you, your version of, of her in the mirror. So either, you know, your, your, powerful inner woman or your powerful inner man that the you that you want to be the perfect idea of you if you know no one else if you didn't have to like you know be a certain way because you feel like society dictates that or the people around you desire it if you could just be whoever you could click your fingers and magically there you are who would you be and obviously like grounded in reality in the sense that it's still you so you know, we don't want to like completely change ourselves. Like we're still us, we're still kept within the confines of who we are, but, but our like our best self, if we had the confidence and the self-esteem to be our best self, who would we be and how would we look? And then talk to that person, speak to them, have a conversation, ask them, how, how, how can I get to where you are now? How can I be you? How can I move my life more in that direction? Like, you're there already. You've done it, and you're looking back at me, and I'm, like, stuck in the past somewhere, and you're further along the timeline of my life, or you're in, like, a quantum world, and, you know, you've become you, and I've become me. But how do I, how do I change my world so that I'm you? Have a conversation with that person and see, see if you can get any truths, any secrets from them, any tips. And that's your challenge for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday is to basically talk to yourself. Yourself who is sorted, yourself who has cleared up that mess, yourself who, who isn't held back by anyone or anything. Yourself who has got rid of the baggage that they carried around with them their entire life and has risen above it and moved beyond it. Talk to that self in your mind, in the mirror, or you can close your eyes and visualize a mirror and have a conversation. 
but do that and see what you can bring away from it. See what you can take and then apply to your own life in a physical sense. And this card is basically like just asking you to believe in yourself and to call on your inner powers and your inner guides and really trust that if you take yourself into the sacred circle of that space, then you will be able to, to transform where you are right now in, into somewhere better. And it won't all happen in one go, you know, it's not going to happen necessarily in Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, but that's the start, that's the beginning and then where you choose to take it from there is up to you. But your challenge for Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday is to apply yourself to that task and then see what happens and journal about it if that helps and then you've got, you know, something to look back on and go, oh, okay, yeah, that seemed like a bit of a crazy idea. But actually it was quite helpful because that's what kickstarted that project or that was what kind of got me out of that rut. Um, the card for Thursday and Friday is the King of Pentacles. So now we've kind of like done our, our sitting and meditating and dialoguing with ourselves and that kind of like real emotional and spiritual soul work. Thursday and Friday are like kind of taking it out into the world and planting it back on the ground. And they're all about money, like fortune, finance. And money doesn't just have to be money. Money is like, it, it, it's wealth. This card is about wealth, but wealth isn't just money. Wealth can be you know, like I have lots of love in my life, therefore I am really wealthy. I have a beautiful garden that I planted recently with herbs in it and vegetables. And so I'm wealthy in that sense. Or I'm wealthy because I have, you know, plenty of fresh, good, whole, organic food in my pantry and refrigerator and I feel really blessed and I'm wealthy in that sense and how privileged or I'm wealthy because um, you know I have um, lots of friends and a really close loving family around me I'm wealthy because I sleep really well every night and I wake up feeling re refreshed I'm wealthy because um, you know I have children who love me or I have a pet who loves me and I'm happy with my partner you know there are many many ways in which we can be wealthy um, you can be wealthy because you're really creative you can be wealthy because you're really practical you can be wealthy because you're a great problem solver um, you, you can be wealthy because you work out every day and your body is getting stronger and fitter um, or, you know, wealth can be achievements and accomplishments and wealth can be privileges that you have that don't take the form of money. Like wealthy could be, um, you know, tending to your plot of land. It doesn't matter whether it brings in any money or not. It's like if you're tending to your plot of land and it brings you happiness and joy because you're planting things and they're growing and then you're able to enjoy and appreciate them, then, I mean, that's amazing. Um, so this card is basically saying th Thursday and Friday are all about nurturing the wealth you have and creating and cultivating more wealth in your life and kind of like looking out over the kingdom that you have and ruling it wisely and making wise, thoughtful decisions about where you would like to take things from here on in. Um, and it's it's less of an airy fairy energy and it's more of a practical grounded energy so it's kind of like bring it back down to earth um, on Thursday and Friday and look at things with more of a business mind um, but kind of like you know like a happy easy week in that respect there's nothing to fear here then we get to the weekend and the weekend is the six of swords so this card is possibly, arguably, a little bit more gloomy. This man and this woman and this child. 
are on a raft and they're leaving where they were before and they're journeying somewhere new and they have these six heavy rigid swords on their raft that they're carrying with them and there's a great responsibility in trying to carry these swords across the water because you know they're upright so they might fall over they're not balanced so they're impractical and also it's like if they're upright what are they sticking into does that mean that they're like created holes in the bottom of the boat and so the boat might like start sinking on the way across or maybe it's like they're plug they've created holes and now they're plugging those holes and even though they're heavy and they're precarious and they're making it a lot harder to like move that boat across the water you can't take them out you can't lie them down flat which would be more practical because then your boat will start to sink the energy of this card is sad and bleak and challenging and difficult and it's all about leaving something behind saying goodbye and moving towards something new and it's a something new we can't see it's a something new we can't equip we can't work out whether it's a good something new or a bad something new yet because we can't really see it all we can see in the distance are these kind of like rocky slopes with like a few trees on them and it's a bit sparse it's not welcoming it's not like a beautiful verdant landscape it's it's bleak and we don't even know if it's possible to live there yet because you know we're in the distance and we can't quite see it clearly and the sky overhead looks like a kind of like a wintry sky it looks cold um, the woman on the boat with a little child next to her she's got a shawl and it's kind of like wrapped over her and she's huddled up and it's like we can't tell if she's sad or if she's cold but she seems subdued she seems like the fight has gone out of her like she's kind of like surrendered to whatever is happening and she is not in control of this journey of this boat where it's going somebody else the man is like he is the one that's calling the shots he is the one that's pushing it in that direction and she is just there kind of having to go along with the whole thing because that's part of of his plan um, and we're crossing an expanse of water so that is it's an emotional journey but it's it's one that's like because it's the swords it's also going to be really intellectual and mentally challenging it's something we're going to have to work through in our minds um, so this card is kind of saying that maybe at the weekend you're going to find out about something and it's going to be something that you didn't choose. So if you're in a relationship, maybe your partner has, has news. Maybe he has a new career opportunity. Or maybe he's like, right, I've had it with living in this place and I want to move somewhere else. Um, or maybe, you know, there's, there's something in his health or something in your health that basically, like, means that you have to kind of like take a different look at your life and, and maybe move in a different direction or take a, take a journey that you weren't anticipating having to take because of whatever it is that you're having to deal with. So something's going to come up that needs to be dealt with. And maybe there's something that's going to come up is, is a dream opportunity. So it's like, oh, it's a new job and then it's a new country and, you know, or in a new place in the country that you live in. And it's really exciting and everything. And maybe, maybe the, the person steering the boat is the person that's offered you the job. Or maybe the person that's steering the boat is your partner and they're the one that's got the job and you kind of have to go along with it because that's the dynamic of your relationship. Or maybe you are the one steering the boat and you're having to bring your family along with you and, you know, it's not quite as easy as you would hope. It's, it's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a sacrifice here. There's a loss it's like we're not sailing off happily into the sunset we're we're leaving something important behind and we're moving off into new uncharted waters and we don't know what we're going to experience or what we're going to find but we've got these six swords that we have to take with us and these six swords are six painful truths and we will be much better off without these six swords so just be aware that the weekend might be slightly challenging 
But if you can prepare for it, if you know about it in advance, then you can get your head straight. And the week has set you up to have your head straight anyway, because the week has been really nurturing and really strengthening and really good for your confidence um, and your sense of control over your life. Yeah, you've like had a conversation with yourself, you've done some soul searching and some healing, and then you kind of sat down and tried to apply it practically and kind of like set a focus for yourself or, you know, just reaffirmed that focus to yourself so that you, ha- you don't get pushed off course by things that have happened during the previous week, things that people might have said to you. And then now it's like, mm, now there's going to be some like painful, painful truths to look at and figure out what you want to do with. And maybe you just have to pick them up and take them with you. But maybe you could leave them behind. Maybe you could go, actually, you know what? On this last leg of the journey or on this next leg of the journey, I'm not carrying that with me anymore. That's not mine anymore. That belongs to somebody else. That's a burden that was put upon me. That's a label that was given to me and I don't want it anymore. So it's not coming on my boat. So, you know, you could prepare for this and you can look at this card and you can go, okay, maybe I have to take this journey and maybe I have to get on this boat alone or with others but I don't necessarily have to carry six swords with me because those swords are painful truths and they're detrimental and they're you know threatening to puncture the hull of my boat so this card is like offering you some ideas and some guidance so that you don't just have to kind of like pack up and move off in a direction that you're not very happy or excited about and in a direction that makes you sad because of what you've left behind um and i think if whatever it is that you're being called to leave behind you can focus more on where you're going and trying to feel more confident and more hopeful about that then that will make things easier and so to do that I always find it's 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 helpful for me to create a new story so you know <clears throat> everything that we encounter in our lives that's hard has a story attached to it but we don't have to live by that story we can change the story so you know um if if something challenging happens um and i'm trying to think of um an example but one that's not personal um but say okay so say say if you were um unlucky enough to get food poisoning and so you know you felt really really rubbish and you couldn't eat solid foods for a couple of days and and and, and you know you didn't really want to kind of like do anything at all but being sick with food poisoning for say three days, if it's just like a kind of average case of food poisoning, then maybe that kind of like encourages you to look more about at what you eat. Maybe you decide, okay, I'm going to go on a water cleanse or a juice cleanse, or you know, I'm really going to take care of myself. Or maybe because you just feel so rubbish, all you do is read all day and meditate and sleep, and so you know, that that something good came out of it. So then afterwards, so while you're going through it, you can look at it as a time to rest and a time to heal and be healthier and do something good for your body. It's like, oh, it's given me, you know, um, the time to actually do something really healthy and clean for my body that maybe I wouldn't have done otherwise. And maybe um, afterwards you can look back on it and go, yeah, that was the thing that kick-started my healthy, you know, my healthy, clean living. That was the thing that kick-started me to, to really think more about what I put in my mouth um, and how it might affect me and where it comes from and whether it's good for me or not. So there's always a way of reframing our story in order to make it more digestible and in order to make it more useful to us because if we only focus on the bad thing like, oh, I was so ill and I had food poisoning and I felt rubbish for three days and oh, poor me, poor me, then we're kind of missing, we're missing the gift in it, yeah, because we're not, we're not looking at it and going no but it had a silver lining because it encouraged me to do this or it gave me the opportunity to do this and i think that's always a really helpful thing to do because you know life life is bumpy life is just life does not go consistently 
along one line it's not consistently normal or consistently joyful or consistently anything it's changing the whole time and it's up and down the whole time so even when everything's great and we're really happy kind of know that at some point it's probably going to bump down again and then up and then down and then up and that's that's the way it goes and that's that's how we grow and that's how we evolve and that's how we get the most out of it and we become the best self that we can be but it's hard if we don't at the same time have a way of looking at the hard times in a more loving way Uh, and so if we can put a different ascribe a different narrative to the difficult times it helps us to to really move into them and embody them in a very healing transformative way so that when we get out the other side we can look back and go wow that really did mold me into her that that journey that was like so damn difficult and uncomfortable journey where I just wept and wept and wept actually made me into her and I wouldn't change that for the world so those are your cards for the week Um, and that one ended up being quite a deep one actually Um, so I'm kind of I hope you're okay I hope that didn't unsettle you or trigger you in any way if it did please do feel free to reach out to me and um, ask me anything you would like and I will do my best to help. Um, Also if you would like you know more of a personal reading to get some you know more information about that especially if as you travel through the week you know it seems like these things are coming up and manifesting in your life and you would like to prepare in advance for like the weekend or have some more help navigating through it then um, you know do do reach out and connect with me and um, we can have a chat Um, if you would like to do that you can um, contact me via my website which is lemonrosepetals.com and um, that will kind of like point you in the direction of of everywhere else that I'm at as well Um, if you like this video please do like it and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more of me and um, Thank you for listening. I wish you a beautiful day and um, a beautiful and transformational week. Thank you. Bye.